Introducing Oye Kosola Alabi, popularly referred to as the Emotions Doctor, is the lead researcher, intellectual property owner, and the lead facilitator of Emotions City. Welcome to the module on self-awareness, how Jesus embodied self-awareness, how he was the self-aware leader, how he replicated and revealed himself at every point in time as a stable leader and i'm deliberately using those words because it's easy to take it for granted that oh because he is god and that's why so we have a god who sent his son jesus to live as a god on earth and that's how all of us have, are actually we're all gods on earth we were all made in his image so we're here and if you live in nigeria you know that it's another country entirely like nigeria is like 16 countries in one <laughs> with the humans all of us put together you know and then if you live in a special city called lagos lagos is a powerful city as at the last time he was rated the third worst city to live in in the world. I'm not sure where we are now, and I'm hoping that we're receding. You know, we're just moving backwards, not that we're even moving forward to number one. So, living in Lagos and Nigeria is extremely interesting. And then I'm also thinking of other countries also, you know, that I've spent and I've traveled across the continent to visit and all. But how did Jesus, who is God, I don't want to use who was God, no, who is God, live on earth as a human being and reveal his emotions to us at every particular time. So I am looking at the human who came around for 33 years, the human that at a point his family members thought that he was dramatic and at a point they thought he was acting like something was wrong with him like yeah because this guy knew his spirit and then he would tell you that he's from god he's this is that and the 12 year old who started preaching and sharing intelligently like he was just a god at every level and he lived and dwelt amongst men so let me break it down to what exactly self-awareness means and i would elucidate this with five different bible stories on self-awareness we'll read the scriptures together and i'll explain how self-awareness was interwoven in the scripture so um the synopsis of the word self-awareness simply put is an awareness of self with the self being what makes one's identity unique. This unique component includes your thoughts, your experiences, your abilities, everything. Just focusing on yourself. Another one that I would like to look at is the dictionary meaning of self-awareness. Dictionary meaning of self-awareness, which is, um, yes, I just want to speak the English, that's all. Dictionary meaning of self-awareness means Conscious knowledge of your character and your feelings. Conscious knowledge of your character and your feelings. So there are five Bible story, stories that I'll be sharing with you. The first one is how Jesus turned water to wine. The second one is the story of a boy in Capernaum. The third one is how Jesus walked on water. And the two other stories I will also read out to you and I'll tell you the title. So let's look at um, the first one, which is John chapter 2, verses 1 to 11. John chapter 2, verses 1 to 11. I love this Bible story. It reflects the first thing about self-awareness, which was the first miracle that Jesus actually did. The first miracle that he actually did, which was him changing water to wine. So John 2, 11. On the third day, a wedding took place at Cana in Galilee. Jesus' mother was there. And Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine was gone, Jesus' mother said to him, 
they have no more why. Interesting. Like, have you ever attended a reception? Like receptions in Nigeria, you know, one thing is there that after about two hours, you just hear there's rice, but there's no meat. <laughs> Should we go <boil> egg? <laughs> As we were saying, God, we go yo. <laughs> like, if we just go, the food has finished. <laughs> so Jesus attended as a guest. He went with his disciples. The Bible talks about 12 precious men as his disciples. And then his mother. So I'm thinking Jesus and the 12 and his mom, 14 of them. That must have been a serious wedding. You know, for by the time you're taking 14 people, it's like you're going in a bus. <laughs> or maybe a convoy of three cars. But Jesus, that's in the 21st century, but Jesus had his disciples and his mother were there. And he was chilling. Like the guy went as a guest. It's the same way when I show up at events, I don't show up as emotions doctor or pastor income. Like I'm just showing up as Oiko so I'll be like, can we just eat this rice in peace? I didn't come with my title or anything. I just came as a human being. Like as a human being. Don't place any demand on my anointing or grace. I just came to eat rice. There's nothing intellectual or spiritual about eating rice. Like, I just came. We came to dance if there's dance. We came to eat cake or small chops like puff puff and samosa. Yeah, like, I just came. You know, so Jesus and his disciples and the mother were invited to a wedding. Verse 4. So when they said in verse 3 that they have no more wine. In verse 4, Jesus asked the mom. Because... When they said they had no more wine, I'm wondering why the mom did not just like peace be still, just keep quiet. Now, nah. I'm also wondering why or how she got to know that they didn't have wine. Except they announced, we are sorry, oh, the wine has finished, it's now soft drink or water. Like, how did the mother know that they had run out of wine? But somewhere along the line, she had an idea or she was told or she heard whatever that they had run out of wine. And in running out of wine, I'm also wondering why she did not speak to the families of the bride or the groom or the chief bridesmaid. You know, all those human beings who are good people at weddings, who do this and that. Why, when they ran out of wine, she spoke to Jesus? Like, how is running out of wine Jesus' problem? It's like me attending a wedding, as always says, I run out of rice. Like, why are you announcing? So, how is running out of wine a Jesus problem? Why is Jesus involved in this wine drama? So, Jesus' mother said to him, Hey guy, they have run out of wine. And Jesus looked at his mom, now we're involved in looking, saying, Woman, why do you involve me? Like, guy, let him be my own. Like, what's my business? Why do you involve me? Jesus replied, Woman, why do you involve me? My hour has not come. Or my hour has not yet come. And his mother said to the servant, Do whatever he tells you. Like, I am aware of the son that I have. And even though he's a human being, I know he's a God. So even though Jesus was trying not to show his sovereignty, the mother looked at the servant and said, do whatever this guy tells you to do. Nearby stood six stone water jars, the kind used by the Jews for ceremonial washing, each holding from 20 to 30 gallons. Jesus said to the servant, Fill the jars with water. So after his mother had placed a demand on him and set him up, you know what he did? He moved from humanity straight away to sovereignty. Like the, mo the moment the mother said, they have no more wine. That was the first thing she said. The second thing, do whatever he tells you. There's no better way to set anybody up than that. What the mother did at that time was to place a demand on the God in him. The mother immediately suppressed the human and elevated the God. 
And he was still trying to say, my hour has not yet come. But the moment he saw that the mother had done that, Jesus switched and it was less than 60 seconds. He said to them, now fill the jars with water. So they filled them to the brim. Then he told them, after they filled them, even the ones who heeded the instructions, I salute those guys, man. Like two guests are just sitting, mother says anything he says, and they're like, oh, really? Well, all I want is money. And Jesus said to them, fill the jars with water, and they did. Then he told them, now draw some out and take it to the master of the banquet. I was even now wondering, when they ran out of wine, why didn't they call the master of the banquet? Now that wine I show is the first taster. He said, take it to the master of the banquet. And they did so. And the master of the banquet tasted the water that had been turned to wine. He did not realize where it had come from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew. Then he called the bridegroom aside and said, everyone brings out the choice wine first. And then the cheaper wine. After the guests have had too much to drink. But you serve the best till now? For 11 says, what Jesus did here in Cana of Galilee was the first of the signs through which he revealed his glory. Jesus and self-awareness. For Jesus to have followed his mother's instructions, he understood who he was. Jesus understood his strengths, his weaknesses, and he was able to blend it with his actions. So when I even say weaknesses, remember it was a God. So I'm just using that word deliberately because he came as a human being. Jesus already knew that he was God every time, every day. No matter where he went, he didn't have to show it. He knew it. And all he needed to do at every point of manifestation was to follow somebody's level of faith. Two words triggered him. The first one when his mother said to him, they have no more wine. The mother was not suggesting to him. The mother was not asking him what he felt. No, the mother was placing a demand. You cannot be here and there's scarcity. The mother was saying, you cannot be here and there's lack. And he told the mother, he did not even deny that he knew that it had power. No. He just told his mother, my time has not yet come. Like it's not my hour. Like the guy knew that he was a God. The guy already knew that his time was going to come. He already knew. He was just chilling. And his mother said to the guys, do whatever he tells you. Like don't do what makes sense. Do what he tells you to do. That is the Jesus that you and I serve. The Jesus that is God in the morning, God in the afternoon, God at night. That one that shows up a minute before disappointment because that's really what happened at the wedding. That one that shows up right in disappointment. That one that shows up right after disappointment. Like when they said they have run out, run out of wine. In how many minutes Jesus changed the story? That is the God that we serve. The first story on self-awareness. Let's look at John 4. John 4, 46 to 54. Once more, he visited Cana in Galilee where he had turned water to wine. Can you see? So he went back there and there was a certain royal official whose son lay sick at home. When this man heard that Jesus had arrived in Galilee from Judea, he went to him and begged him to come and heal his son, who was close to death. 48 says unless you people see signs and wonders jesus told him you will never believe 49 the royal official said sir come down before my child dies and jesus remember the self-aware god jesus said go your son will live jesus knew that he didn't have to show up to perform a miracle he knew the power of his words he knew that all he needed to do was to say it, he would see it. Jesus understood the power and the presence that he carried. He understood how to operate with and by the finger of God. He understood that when I decree it, it shall be established. 
Jesus understood the covenant in words. Isn't it very ironical? There was a particular day I was teaching somewhere and I said to people that let's do this, let's, let's just stand up and recite this. And they all stood up thinking I had good plans for them. And I said, please recite this after me. I have cancer, I'm going blind, blind and I will be dead by my next birthday. And all of them kept quiet. And I said, please say that after me. They kept quiet. I repeated it again on my own. <laughs> Nothing happened. So I asked them, Guys, why are you not talking? And one person said, yes, ma'am, I'm not saying it because I don't want that to happen to me. I said, good. That automatically says to me that the law of auto-suggestion says to you that even as a joke, you cannot utter those words out. Yes or no? She said, yes. So I said, good. So if your mind says to you that your negative declarations can come to pass, how much more your positive declarations? How much power do you attach to it how much how much interpretation do you have how much do you value the words that come out of your mouth you and i are in this blessed country for example nigeria that is in africa and the words that we utter from our mouth from the moment we wake up to the moment we go to bed negates everything that our prayer is about and we're wondering why we're not seeing the manifestations you are attacking the seed you are sowing. Did you ever notice anywhere in the Bible that Jesus said anything negative about himself? He was never recorded. Not even as a joke. He showed up at a wedding as a guest. Performed a miracle. He went back to that area again. A, a man said to him, My child is at home. He's about to die close to death. And Jesus said, Just go home. And let's look at it. The man took Jesus at his work. He also participated. He had faith and departed. 51. While he was still on his way, his servants met with him with the news that his boy was leaving. When he inquired as to the time when his son got better, they said to him, Yesterday at one in the afternoon, the fever left him. Then the father realized that this was the exact time at which Jesus had said to him, Your son will leave. Jesus knew himself. Do you know yourself? Have you Googled self-awareness? Have you done an internal audit of your thoughts, your feelings, and your actions? How do you act under pressure knowing that pressure only reveals content? What are your strengths? How do you react when you are stressed? When you are disappoint disappointed? How do you react with every other person, with your colleagues at work? Who are you? The third story, Matthew 8, 13, uh, Matthew 8, 18 to 34. Matthew 8, 18 to 34, the cost of following Jesus. When Jesus saw the crowd around him, he gave others to cross to the other side of the lake. Then a teacher of the law came to him and said, Teacher, I will follow you wherever you go. Jesus said, Jesus replied, Foxes have dens and birds have nests, but the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. Jesus knew himself. Jesus knew himself. The first law of leadership is know thyself. Jesus knew himself. 21, another disciple said to him, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. But Jesus told him, follow me and the dead will bury their dead. Verse 23, then he got into the boat and the disciple followed him. Suddenly a furious storm came up on the lake so that the waves swept over the boat. But Jesus was sleeping. Kaya Bukoturia. Jesus was sleeping in pressure. Jesus was sleeping despite all that was happening or about to go wrong. <laughs> that is when you know that you know that as long as you are on board, nothing can go wrong. That is the God that you and I serve. Jesus was sleeping in between the malfunctioning boat. Jesus knew that no matter what is happening, I cannot die. I will only lay my life down. Jesus was sleeping. He replied. And then the disciples, 25, when Jesus went and walked, the disciples went and woke him and saying, Lord, save us, we are going to drown. Honestly, you should have told them that you are the one that's going to drown. Me. I can turn water to land in one second. You know, but because he was on board, so he said, he replied, you of little faith. Meaning, do you know who is on board with you? Do you know who I am? That's a good time to actually say that. You know, all of those people who flood, do you know who I am over now? 
and they don't have anything. <laughs> Jesus said, you have little faith, why are you so afraid? Then he got up. He didn't even have to get up, but as a human person, you know. Then he got up and rebuked the winds and the waves, and he was completely calm. The men were amazed and asked him, what kind of man is this? Even the winds and the waves obey him. Kayabu Kotori Abahasata. 28. When he arrived at the other side of the region of Gedaren, two demon possessed men coming from the tombs met him. They were so violent that no one could pass that way. 29. What do you want with us, son of God? They shouted. So, even when they saw Jesus, they recognized him. He didn't have to introduce himself. <laughs> have you come here to touch us before the appointed time? Some distance from them, a large herd of pigs were feeding. The demons begged Jesus like the humble though, and said, if you drive us out, please, sir, we need a home to stay. Just send us into the heads of the pigs. Demons recognized Jesus. Thank God he recognized himself before that. Like sometimes people recognize us before we recognize ourselves. I hope that's not where you fall. Self-awareness is extremely key. Articulating. Please go on Google, go on YouTube, study self-awareness. Get our online course on the me preservation, people preservation, and earth preservation at Emotion City. Just get across to us right about now and get it on it. Self-awareness. Jesus knew who he was. Every time he even tried to hide or not show himself, there was a demand placed on him. So let's look at how Jesus walked on water. Matthew 6, 45 to 52. Immediately, Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go ahead, go on ahead of him to Bethesda. While he dismissed the crowd, after leaving them, he went up on a mountainside to pray. 47. Later that night, the boat was in the middle of the lake and he was alone in the land. He saw the disciples straining on the oars. Behind the wind was against them. Hmm. Shortly before dawn, he went out to them walking on the lake. He was about to pass by them. But when they saw him walking on the lake, they thought he was, they thought he was a god. So they cried out because all saw him and were terrified. Immediately he spoke to them and said, Take courage, it is I. Don't be afraid. Then he climbed into the boat with them and the wind died down. Like Jesus has said, Take courage, it is I. Like in between the storm, Take courage, it is I. I am here with you. Jesus knew what they didn't have to remind him. I remember one day I was flying. I was flying to the US and we were in between the turbulence. And there was a gentleman. I was reading my Bible actually. I was just I had not read my Bible for some days, so it was a good time to read my Bible for at least six hours. I needed to compress all the verses I had not studied to study. And I was reading my Bible, and then there was this gentleman who was beside me, who during the turbulence and all was looking at me and he was smiling. And I was wondering why he was smiling, because I didn't understand who he me. You know, and then while the turbulence was going on, truthfully. I was thinking of my will, I was thinking of my parents, I was thinking of my siblings, like, I was just saying that, God, I don't want to die and then they will not see my body. Like, I was scared. And this guy was looking at me and he was smiling and I didn't understand. So, I thought, I got embarrassed by his smile or whatever, so I had to ask him that, Hi, so smiling, it's all well? And he said, oh, ah, yes, yeah, so that there's turbulence, but he's just happy that he's sitting by a child of God. Like the guy was smiling because I was reading my Bible. Like the guy, by association, was saying to himself that I was not going to die. Here I was, oh, I died. <laughs> Me, who was reading Bible, I died. The guy just was saying to himself that I don't know who this girl is, but this girl is reading the Bible. And as long as this girl is by my side, I am using spiritual Bluetooth to stay alive. Like the guy had to remind me that I was a child of God. You know, the moment he said that, that oh, um, I just noticed you were reading your Bible and I was just at peace that nothing was going to go wrong on board. I could not say, are you for real? Like when he told me I had goosebumps all over my body. But what happened at that point was the fact that I forgot who I was. Of course, Christians have died in plane crashes. Of course, I can die. But I will 
if he was my type. I'm not sure anybody that died surprised God. I doubt it. He surprised men, but I know he would not have surprised God. So the only reason why that would have ended in a crash was if it was our time. But somewhere along the line we were preserved and I am grateful. Not because I'm better, I am grateful. But this, the message there is, a gentleman by association felt that he was going to be preserved because a child of God was on board. Self-awareness, I forgot who I was in that minute. Finally, 2 Timothy 1.7. Finally, your self-awareness. 2 Timothy 1.7. For the spirit of God gave, for the spirit God gave us does not make us timid, but gives us power, love, and self-discipline. Self-awareness. Going back to those that know their God, when you know you will be strong. If you are not strong and experiencing imposter syndrome, please check what you know. Your lack of knowledge may be showing up in inferiority complex, low self-esteem, whatever it is. Just check what you know. Do you really know what you know? Jesus was an embodiment of self-awareness. Like the guy was God and man at the same time. He was always on point. Always on point. The next model we'll be talking about the socially intelligent Jesus, meaning how Jesus dealt with other people relationships, everything, social awareness, everything. Thank you guys for hanging out with me. We're proceeding to the next section, which is the socially intelligent Jesus, where we're talking about Jesus and social awareness. We're starting the second module. I hope the first module was a blessing to you. Thank you for sticking to this time. Let's catch up again at the second module. Thank you for listening to this timeless teaching. For bookings or details on the Emotion City, please visit www.emotioncity.com